From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Jim Peterson, Mr. Dollar. Oh, hiya, Sheriff. I uh, understand you talked with Miss Parker this afternoon. That's right, I did. Well, what do you think now? I think I'm going back to Hartford the first thing in the morning. So you finally decided the girl is innocent. I don't know, Sheriff. And I probably never will know. I'm just finishing up my report now. I'll send you a copy of it. Well, I'll be mighty interested in seeing it. On the basis of my investigation, I'm sure the company will pay her claim without question whenever she's ready to file. I'm beat, hands down, and there's no use denying it. Well, you can't win every time, Mr. Dollar. It's not that, Sheriff. But this is the first time I've ever had to end a report with a question mark. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Green Pass, Virginia, to the Home Office, Surety Mutual Insurance Limited, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment... The Qui Bono Matter. Expense account, final page. <laughs> Item 14, 50 cents. Notary fee on a 20-page report. A report that covered everything and told nothing. But it was the best I could do. I had no more leads, no new ideas. The bare facts of the case still stood. Dan Parker had returned unexpectedly from a trip, entered his darkened home late at night, and had been shot to death as a prowler by his daughter, Luann. Amount of insurance... $100,000. Beneficiary, Luann. I checked through a half a dozen theories and been forced to throw out every one of them. And the whole case finally came down to just one simple question. When Luann pulled that trigger and fired down the dark stairway, did she or did she not know that she was shooting at her father? I couldn't answer it. And I didn't believe anyone else would ever be able to. Except, of course, Luann herself. Item 15, one dollar even. Transportation out to the Happy Hollow Roadhouse, where the steaks were good, the drinks were good, and a beaten-down guy could kill anything. Well, wrap me up and nail me south. Here's that dollar man again. How's it going, Sammy? <laughs> Business gets any worse, so I'll open an artery. You here for kicks tonight, or are you going to put the arm on me again? Let joy reign unsuppressed. That's the word, man, that's the word. Come on over, I'll let you buy me a drink. You're riding on a swindle sheet. Or oh, better yet, I'll let you buy me one. You own the joint. Okay, okay. Set us up, Joe. Make mine a usual fusel. What do you have, sir? Scotch on the rocks. You ever get through to that Parker chick? Yeah, I talked to her this afternoon. Well, what do you think, man? Was I right or was I right? About what? Is she a cool fool or not? I don't know, Sammy. She's a tough one to figure. She's just a tough one, period. Well... Here's to the housekeeper's daughter. Yep. Ooh. Ah, this stuff is murder. I don't know why the customers stand for it. So what comes next, Tex? I'm going back to Hartford in the morning. And little Cookie gets her payoff. A hundred G's. Man, it's really going for broke. If she is on the level, it's not enough to pay for the way she'll probably feel for the rest of her life. Feel? That one? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I know that little fluff. She's got a heart about as big and warm as the olive in a martini. You could be right. <laughs> I know I'm right. She's took you, man. She's took you good. Bang, bang, and the little lady wins a prize. Maybe so. A big, fat hundred G's. And bad old papa in the cold, cold ground. Man, she was really shooting for new shoes that night. Well, if she was, she's got them, Sammy. There's nothing more I can do about it. So that's life. <laughs> what is it? You win a little, lose a little. And taxes take the rest. Why, Parker's got it made, man. Safe and cozy in his little box. No more worries. Oh, sure. But we can't all be lucky. Sometimes it... Well, well. Hmm? Brace yourself, Sammy. It looks like you're rated. What? Oh, it's the sheriff. Right on time. On time? Relax, Max. He's just come to tell the tale and do the deal. Protection? Well, sure. Same setup I had with Parker. <laughs> and the sheriff says he'll keep bully boy Bates in line. How about that, huh? Well, life goes on, I guess. Well, I wasn't expecting to run into you out here, Miss Dollar. I don't imagine. Finish your report? Yep. Right down to the last comma, Sheriff. And the last question mark. Oh, now, 
I don't reckon there's any question, Mark. You got to the truth, all right. Just wasn't what you'd expected, that's all. Never so. You got a minute, Sammy? Sure thing, pal. Let's go back to the office. Stick around, Dollar. The joint will be jumping. Fine. I can hardly wait. Uh, let's have another one here, bartender. Coming up. <laughs> Sir, would you do me the honor of having a little drink with me? Well, thanks. I'm having one with you. I've already got it. Well, so you have. So you have. <laughs> well, another little one never hurts, though. <laughs> Later, maybe. Thanks, anyway. Any time, friend. <laughs> what line you in? The insurance record. Insure? Well, well, that's all right, I guess. I... Uh... Oh, thank you. Thank you, bartender. Thank you very much. I'm in ladies ready to wear myself. It must be fascinating. A wholesale. I work out of Baltimore cover three whole states. Oh, I've got a great little line of merchandise. <laughs> I uh, really don't need any. Oh, the heck with business. Let's live a little, shall we? <laughs> a Mr. Dollar. Oh. Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes. Well, well, he's looking at you, Dollar. Yeah. Ah, you know, I always believe in living while I can. Because you never know. Now, that's a very profound thought. No, sir. You just never do. Because it can happen to anybody. Just like it did to a fellow I met last week. Man right here in this town, too. A fellow named Parker. Parker? That's right. He was a fine chap. I met him on the train coming out from Richmond. And I was on my way to Roanoke. Oh, we were laughing and we were joking and everything. And that very night he got killed. And I read about it in the paper. So you just don't never know. Hey, look, tell me something. Are you the man who got off the train with him, talked with him on the platform while the train was standing in the station? That's right, that's right. He wanted me to meet his daughter. And that's all he talked about. It was his daughter. Oh, he was crazy about that kid. Well, uh, did he expect her to be there at the station? Yes, but she wasn't. I, I guess he got the wires crossed. He tried to phone her, but he, he didn't have any luck. So I get back on the train. He walks off down the road. And a half hour later, he's dead. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you just never know. On the train, on the way down, what did he say about his daughter? Oh, you know, the way a guy talks about his kid. He, he worshipped her. Yes, he did. That's all. He, he was telling how they were always kidding each other. And they were... Oh, say, here. Here, take a look at this tie I'm wearing. Yeah, sure. It's a nice tie. Sure, it's a nice tie. That's what anybody would think, just to look at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice... Come on, come on. I want to show you something about this tie. Well, uh, can't you show me without going No, out... you got to go outside. So come on, come on. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Parker gave me this tie. He was wearing one on the train, and I liked it, so he gave me one. He said he had three of them. His daughter gave them to him the week before. He got them from some novelty house. <laughs> so come on, come on. Well, look, uh, what is it you want to show me about it? Oh, come on, come on. we got to go down there at the corner of the building. Oh, boy, this will knock you out. No, I'm telling you, oh, it's just real crazy. Yeah, it must be. Parker never would have given it to me, except he had three of them. He figured he could never wear them all, so... Well, uh, well come on, let's see the trick. All right, all right. Look, it's just a nice necktie, isn't it? That's all. Yeah, that's all. Nothing out of the ordinary. Now, come on around the corner here, out of the light. Oh, boy, this is going to fracture you. <laughs> now, now, look. Well, I'll be... Good Lord. How about that, eh? Is it crazy? That daughter of Parker's really must be something, huh? Yeah, she is. Can you imagine a kid thinking up an idea like that? Can you? <laughs> Giving her dad a necktie that, that glows in the dark. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Parker. Well, Mr. Dollar, what are you doing out here this time of night? Mind if I come in? Please do. Thanks. Oh, I brought your gun back. The sheriff was finished with it. I never want to see it again. I know how you feel. I'll put it uh, here on the table. You'd better not leave it there, though. It's loaded. I wish Sheriff Peterson had kept it. Oh, it may come in handy sometime. Again. Mr. Dollar. I was planning to leave town in the morning, Miss Parker. I'd already made out my report and given you a clean bill of health. I didn't even realize I was under suspicion. What was I supposed to have done, Mr. Dollar? Deliberately murdered your father in order to collect $100,000 in life insurance. You've got a pretty horrible mind, haven't you? Maybe, but I wouldn't trade it for yours. Haven't you noticed my necktie, Miss Parker? I thought you'd tag it the first thing. Why should I? Because it belonged to your father. A special gift from his loving daughter. He gave it to a man he met on the train, and I bought it for $10 this evening. 
So now you know what happened to the third tie. That's probably been bothering you. Because I imagine you carefully destroyed the other two. I think you're a little more than slightly insane. Oh, it was a neat plan. Simple and sweet. You got the idea a month ago when the sheriff caught a prowler over on the south side of town. And suddenly you began to hear prowlers at night. You bought your father a set of ties that glow in the dark. And then you waited. And when he came back from that trip, you got your chance. You've got quite an imagination. Oh, it was a great setup. A dark house and him wearing a tie that glowed in the dark, just like this one, Miss Parker. It was a perfect target. You couldn't miss. It's almost a shame that you were beaten by one unforeseen accident. Your father talked to a stranger and gave him a tie. And that tie is going to hang you. No, I don't think so, Mr. Dollar. Turn on those lights. You were right, you know. It is a perfect target. You were very clever, Mr. Dollar. But not quite clever enough. Or you'd have known... Sheriff. Yeah, I've been standing out there on the terrace. You... No, no, Luann. You better give me the gun. No use pointing it, honey. It's loaded with blanks. You all right, Miss Dollar? Yeah, I'm all right, Sheriff. A little sick, that's all. That anybody so beautiful could be so right. You faked it. You tricked up the whole thing just to frame me, you filth. You dirty evil. Nah, that's enough, Luann. No. That's enough. <laughs> Nobody tricked you except yourself. That's yeah, hard for me to believe. <laughs> Dan and me used to take you fishing with us when you wasn't no, no higher than that. You was the prettiest little thing I think I'd ever oh, seen. Oh, shut up, you old fool. Now I got to take you someplace again. Wish I hadn't ever lived to see this day. And I'm mighty glad that Dan ain't here to see it. Come on, honey. We better get started. Expense account item 16, $148.30. Hotel and incidentals in Green Pass and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $382.65. End of account, end of report. Remarks. When you gave me this assignment, Don, you asked a question, a phrase in Latin. Qui bono? Who benefits? So here's your answer. Nobody. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another intriguing story for you beginning next Monday night. Next week, a study in entomology. You know, bugs. And this one's the deadly variety. A firebug. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were D.J. Thompson, Mary Jane Croft, Forrest Lewis, Byron Kane, Russell Thorson, Sam Edwards, Dal McKinnon, and Howard McNear. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>